What's going on you guys, Frost here and I'm back with another video. In today's video I'll be doing an in-depth Nunu jungle guide. Nunu right now is a pretty strong pick. He's a very easy champion to play and learn as well, whilst also being able to carry you through a lot of games just because of how good he is at actually objective control and doing ganks. His teamfight presence is massive as well with good ult placements and overall highly recommended to start learning the jungle on this champion specifically just because he is so good for it and yeah that's yeah that's all i have to say about that let's just go right into the runes now the runes on nunu are just pretty straightforward you want to go aftershock on nunu it's the best one to go with because of the fact that you are going to be very very tanky with it and as soon as you run in with a snowball you're going to proc the aftershock if you hit your target and then you're going to be pretty much unkillable for a little bit so that's really the one you want to get there's not really a better option and yeah just get aftershock it's all i have to say about that now the next option here is font of life this will be your best bet because you are impairing the movement of an like of the enemies very easily and a lot as well so just the extra healing your team gets out of this is really good you're playing a tank role so like healing your enemies off your max hp is going to be a significant amount of extra healing Usually when I see this rune, if I look at the rune value in my match history, it's going to be like 3,000, 4,000 healing for this rune per game. Maybe a little bit more depending on game length, but that's usually what you're looking at. And that's a good amount of additional HP for your team. So that's really the option there. You can also go for Demolish if you want. If you are creating that early pressure for the ganks, if you can get the ganks off pretty easily, then Demolish can be effective to get turret plating with it. But yeah, overall, I'd say Font of Life is more valuable than Nunu, and that's the one I would recommend. Now, following that up is the conditioning. This is just the best one, just because you are a tank, you are building tank items. So this is going to be overall increasing the value of your tank items by a significant amount. And that's why just conditioning is very good. Now, to follow that up, you want to get Revitalize on Nunu, just simply because this makes your heal stronger, which means that as soon as you queue something, your heal is going to become stronger. And that's just really what you're looking for. Now... You can also go for unflinching if the enemy team is very, very CC heavy. But I wouldn't recommend just sacrificing your healing because the healing Nunu gets from his Q will save you a lot in team fights and will make you just a massive annoyance to deal with. So every single bit of health counts, every single bit of healing counts, and that's why I prefer Revitalize. Now into, again, just following this up triumph for the same reason as Revitalize. You can easily get assists on Nunu, it's not a big deal, just a good ult placement will already get you probably 5 assists because of the fact that it's going to hit somebody for at least like a second to slow them, probably, and if not you're going to get like at least 3 assists in a good like good team fight. Unless you completely whiff everything, then this is useless, but if they focus you down you're going to be quite low, you can get your ult off, get a lot of assists, then if the enemy team starts to fall you get a lot of your HP back, combine it with your Q healing on maybe a minion, and you're going to be full HP in no time. So that's really why you want to get this, and then here is just the tenacity rune, this is just going to help you not get CC'd, and that's also why I don't value unflinching over the revitalize that much, because you already have tenacity set up anyway. So this is a pretty straightforward pace, there's really no variance on this, just because of the fact that it's all just very valuable on Nunu, the healing from Triumph and the Revitalize. There, if you look at this page right here, none of this really provides you anything valuable on Nunu, unless you maybe want to go for a fun Predator build on Nunu, then you can go for this with Ingenious Hunter and that type of stuff, but that would be up to you then. And none of this really values anything, now sure, the thing that you might consider is maybe celerity with water walking to be able to snowball through the uh, through the river really quickly and get more ganks off. That could be valuable if you wanna if you prefer that playstyle, I guess. But that's really all that has to be said. And right here, nothing too valuable either. So just getting this is probably the best. Now for your runes, uh, attack speed is best just because of like it helps you with your jungle clear the most. Then you can go for the armor. And maybe double armor if that's best into the enemy team. If not, you can go armor magic resist and that will work too. Like you don't need damage, you have your Q to clear your camps. And then you will also have your Cinderhawk to be able to help you clear the camps effectively as well. So yeah, that's just the room page for Anunu. Let's just get right into the item build now. Alright, so for the item build on Anunu, the best start you want to go with is the Hunter's Talisman. This is going to allow you to kind of uh, sustain and lift through the bigger camps like Krugs and Raptors easily. 
and you already have like your consume to be able to sustain so this is going to help you burn those camps down more effectively and that's why this is the best one to go with now to follow this up you can just get a refillable potion like normal and that would be your starting point now the main initial goal you have is you want to get to your cinder hulk as fast as possible now, to take note here i take the red smite on nunu i find this to be the best smite on nunu as well uh, also just so i want to mention if you want to build the order correctly you want to get the bami cinder first and then upgrade into a red smite afterwards uh, this is because the bami cinder just helps you clear jungle camps a lot more effectively because it will burn down the small ones you whilst you focus the bigger ones in the camp down with your consume and that will make your clear speed a lot better but the red smite really is the one you want because of the fact that blue smite doesn't provide you with much you already have a lot of cc slow potential and everything uh, the main thing is just being able to tank the carries better so you can then just throw a red smite on maybe like an enemy ad carry or an enemy mid laner you're going to take less damage from them whilst you'll be able to tank them better you're also going to be able to deal a bit more damage to them as well and all of that just might seem a little bit insignificant to some of you but it will add up a lot but just using red smite on the carry like that in crucial situations so that's really why you want red smite it's the best one to bet like to go for for sure there's no question there now to follow this up it's whatever boots are best ninja dabais or mercs cc heavy teams mercs otherwise just ninja dabais is good now for anunu at this point it is just tank items it's a very straightforward tank item setup whatever tank item fits best now usually if the enemy team is quite balanced let's say like they have a good balance between magic damage and physical damage um in a lot of situations you'll probably have ninja tabais because it tends to be more uh, the boots you go for because the enemy team isn't going to be that cc heavy and you also have to consider that you do have the tenacity in your runes so that kind of makes up for not having mercs in a lot of games unless the enemy team of course has way too much cc so in your average game if the enemy team is balanced you want to get spirit visage first because this increases all healing received so that means your q is going to heal for more and everything like that so it's really good also you get the cdr from this which is very very nice as well so this would most likely be your first bet uh in like i'd say probably 90 percent of your games now of course fully decoms and all that are excluded but i'll say this is yeah the best one to bet now, to follow this up, then um, you have armor items to look at. I mean, I can just get all the tank items out here. So these are pretty much the tank options right here. So you have the Spirit Visage, which is normally one you pick up first if you're against like an average team. If that's not the case, like if you're facing full AD comps, you can easily just... The one I then tend to go with is just going Deadman's Blade first because it allows you to go for better roam speed. At that stage so then this item set up with that month's plate rush will still put you in a situation where your snowball roams are going to be very effective and then that would work too but your average one is going to be spirit visage into a armor item whichever one that might be if they if you need healing reduction against the enemy team then thorn mill is your best bet so then that would be the case if you don't necessarily need anything specific like crit damage reduction or um healing reduction then you can go for that month's plate for better roams on that front if the enemy team is more magic resist or like magic damage heavy with like two or three people on the enemy team having that then maybe the adaptive helm becomes very effective against subsequent magic damage if your team is magic damage heavy themselves then you can also go for the abyssal mask as well to get the magic resist out of it but then also make sure that the enemy champions take more magic damage as well so let's say you have maybe an ap top and an ap mid then buying an abyssal mask can be very effective if the enemy team is also a bit more ap heavy so you will tank more but they will also like your team will also deal more damage to them so that would then be an effective pick as well but that would be then the option there now let's say just just kind of a standard game i'd probably get a thormill in a lot of situations that these days people tend to have a lot of lifesteal based champions as well now after the thormill you're gonna have four items and then after this point it's kind of just finishing off whatever you want to get usually i find one magic resist item to be more than enough if you're facing just an average team so i tend to pick up maybe the combination of war marks with a deadman's plate in whatever order this is going to allow you to roam a little bit faster and then this is going to just give you a massive amount of extra hp and then also if you walk out of a fight you're going to be able to restore a lot more hp as well and you're just going to be able to go in and out of fights quite effectively on pretty much full hp every single time 
So this would look like a pretty standard six item build, this setup right here. I tend to finish into Warmox because I value these items a little bit more over just the Warmox in general because Nunu's healing is already really, really good. So this would just be as, yeah, kind of a standard setup there. Now again, against full AP comms, Warmox is still a very good item just because it provides a lot of HP. Uh, so the this would then be good and then the Thormill would still be good to kind of counter the healing like let's say a Vlad might have and then also the... Um, the healing from 80 carries because even if the enemy team is fully AP, they're probably still gonna have an 80 carry so one armor item is still gonna be very good into them and then again i probably end off with the warmox and then pick the R thornal into this put the spot right there so yeah nunu is pretty straightforward also i do want to mention this about frozen heart this is a very good armor item if the enemy team is very attack speed based so let's say maybe azir uh azir mid with just i mean olaf jungle or something like that something that just feeds off of attack speed a lot then frozen heart to reduce that will combine really well with these with um, the uh, random ones as well so that could be a combination there too and that's really all that has to be said nunu is very situational item build that just feeds into what tank items go best into the enemy team so if you have any questions on that put that in the comments below i'll do my best to answer those questions for you if you guys have enjoyed this video so far please make sure to hit the thumbs up button it means a lot and yeah let's just get right into the gameplay section now all right, welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you can see, I am playing Nunu, of course, into a Sejuani. Now, this is one of the more common matchups you could get, I guess, is what you can say. Uh, these are both the best tank junglers you can play right now, Sejuani and Nunu. They're both quite easy, don't need a lot of resources, and are able to just provide a lot of crowd control in teamfights. So, both of those are good options. I personally prefer Nunu because... I just find him a little bit more fun than Sejuani, but I have to say that Sejuani is the better champion, so she will have a little bit of advantage here as well. And the main thing with Nunu comes that you have to go for the objective control over Sejuani, that's where you shine compared to her, she's better at ganking. She's also better at providing CC in teamfights than you are, however if you place your ultimate properly then you can still do a lot of stuff in teamfights with Nunu as well. Now first off, I'm gonna just quickly get the visibility to red side. Now, I actually am not sure if we spotted them here, or if I spotted them here. Let me go back a bit. Oh, we did spot them there, okay. Now we know they're in our jungle then, right? Just chill here for a bit, see how they path. This way I can still walk out in any direction. I'm walking back and forth to kind of check the extra vision on this side as well. So I can see if they flank and then I may be, I'm able to walk away. Now the first initial starting skill on Nunu, by the way, is your Q always. Pretty obvious reasons, it's your main damaging ability against your jungle camps. Now following that up, you just get your W. I usually just get the W to just hit the Raptor camp with it. The way I tend to want to clear on Nunu is trying to go for maybe an early top gank. So I can go Raptors into this and then maybe look for an early top lane gank. Now the only thing, the issue with that is this game, is that this top laner is a Vlad. So that does make this gank a little bit more difficult. So I just wait here, get the Scuttle Crab, run with the Snowball through mid lane and get the other Scuttle Crab. On Nunu, uh, it's very impossible for the enemy to actually out smite you or just like steal a Scuttle Crab from you if you just use your smite properly. So I'll go back here. I, I This is the way I like to clear on Nunu, just in general. Doing the red start. And then going for the Raptors into the Krugs, if I'm topside of the map. Because then I'll be able to gank topside very very quickly as well. If I'm not that side of the map, I tend to just clear up. And then do the, or sorry, do the red into Krugs. And then just walk up, do blue and maybe gank top at that, at that stage as well. And that should give me enough time to still be able to get at least top scuttle. If the top lane like gank kind of gets a little bit delayed then I will not be able to get to Bot Scuttle in time before the enemy juggler takes it. But that would then be fine because then I would have provided a lot of pressure on the top laner. Now if this wasn't a Vladimir, I probably would have already done that and just ran into top lane with a snowball. Let's say it's anything else that doesn't have a pool to make you pretty much ungankable. You'll be a, a lot better off really. So yeah, right here, just walk, wait, oh, wait for the um, Scuttle, just get it real quick. I see the Sichuani bot lane, doesn't really matter, there's really no way she can get there faster than me. 
Also, connecting the snowball with this scuttle crab will reduce its armor and magic resist. Now, on Nunu, you do have the Q, which gives true damage, so it doesn't necessarily matter all that much to reduce it, but it's gonna be a little bit faster because it's gonna be within one Q. And if it's not like if you don't reduce the armor, then you're gonna need two Qs to kill it by that time. Now, right here, I'm just gonna keep moving on to my blue buff. Go and do a lot of single target camps is the most effective thing until you get your Cinder Hawk because clearing AoE camps, you're fairly good at it, but not that good at it. If you have your Cinder Hawk or your Bami Cinder, then you're going to be a lot faster at it. And that's also the item I pick up first, as you can see right here. I pick up the Bami Cinder, I get tier 2 boots as well. And my camps should be respawning a little bit shortly. This one is actually respawned by now. Oh, that's the slow down button. So right here, I'm just looking for maybe a top gank, see if the Vlad comes back to lane. Now, again, the only sad part is that it is a Vladimir, else these ganks would be a lot free. Your Nunu is actually extremely good at ganking. And yeah, you one thing to note with a snowball is you have to uh, kind of predict it a little bit wider, that, because it, obviously it has a little bit of a delay when you're trying to turn. So always trying to go with a little bit of a wider angle than you probably think you will. Uh, the best way to practice this is just to go into a custom or like a practice tool game. Just snowball around the map all day. Now, well, not all day, but like do it maybe for like 20 minutes or something like that. Just a little bit of time. Get used to the snowball. Get used to the speed. Get used to the speed at it with multiple levels as well. So start at like level one. Just put a little bit more levels into it because the more levels you put into it, the faster it will be. And that's just one thing to take note of. So that's the best way to get used to that snowball. Just practice it in the practice tool and you should be good. Now right here, I really wanted to get this scuttle crab, so I was kind of waiting for it. The only thing in this situation that happened is the um, Aurelia and the Sejuani both went to contest me on this. Now the good thing about Nunu is you are extremely tanky. Now also to take notice, I have Aftershock on Nunu, because, well, yeah, Aftershock. I proc Aftershock the moment I predict I'm going to take the most damage. Now I did do that a little bit early this game, but yeah. Now right here, so I'll just slow this down, all right. So right here, at this stage, I'm like, all right, well, soon here, I think the Aurelia is gonna jump me, so I wanna get the Aftershock. Aurelia takes a little bit too long, or like, she does fine, but she takes a little bit too long in my mind. So then there, I just have to flash over this wall, I'm guaranteed to die. Now she dashes on me here, she has Ignite on me. Q does heal me for 137, as you can see right there which is really, really nice. Now, I'm really low, but all I really have to do is just numb on that scuttle once, as you can see, and right here, I get a lot of HP back. I can go back into this fight if I want to. My top and my mid laner reacted to this fight. I tanked pretty much all their damage, got their summoners out of it as well, and I'm just gonna be able to go back into this fight. Now, with this regen, as you can see, I am pretty much back to one HP, but I did tank a lot of damage for them this fight. I pretty much played bait, and my top and mid laner were able to clean up. Now, as Nuno, you're not going to be able to do the damage. You're just going to be able to um, tank a lot of it and heal a lot of it back. Now, another big thing here is you are Nuno. You don't have any issues with mana. You don't have any issues with just anything in general, especially after you get your Cinder Hog. So if you get a blue buff or if you take the enemy blue buff, your mid laners around, your top laners around, just somebody that benefits of blue buff just give it to them like on Nunu, you don't need it there's no need for you to get it you are fine without just any buffs in general like you don't need red you don't need blue you don't need anything now of course you don't want to give it to an instant lane so let's say your mid laner is 0 and 4 0 and 5 0 and 3 even like he's just not doing well at that stage you do want to take the blue buff even though it might still be better on him you do not want to give it to the enemy for free if you know what i mean so in those situations, I'd still recommend taking it. However, then if your top laner maybe is doing well, then you can consider just giving it to your top laner if he's around to take it. Now, the one thing also to take note of that you might want to get used to is the E. Uh, as soon as you activate, you're going to have to cap uh, keep clicking it and keep going for the direction that you want to click it so you can get it off into that direction. You need to kind of spam click it to get it off the most times possible. And yeah. I'll just run in here. Um, I want to walk up front for sure. I want to make sure that the Tristana does not get turned on. And yeah, I kind of use my ult to maybe slow them down a little bit if I could there. Uh, I did push them out so I can easily pick up a dragon at this stage. This is what Nunu is really good at. Getting that objective control on Baron and Dragon. And also Rift Herald of course. 
So I kind of just pushed them out. There was really nothing to get, so we just turned to the dragon, and then from here we can go and do this. Now, here I want to give the blue again to Oriana, just because Oriana is doing pretty well, and I don't need it on Lunu, so there's really no use for me to get it. And yeah, right here I just back. I have enough money for my Cinderhawk, and at this point, clearing your jungle becomes really, really easy. Also, Cinderhawk is going to be very good at just doing barons and all that kind of stuff on Nunu. Uh, if it hits the 20 minute mark with Nunu in a game, then you can just baron. Um, you can solo it, however, not that recommended. You can only solo it if you're a little bit fat, so you're going to need like maybe your jungle item plus one... I I'd say more like two tank items and boots. So you're going to need about four items, jungle item, boots, and then two tank items to be able to tank baron. And then solo it. If you have more CDR, it's going to be easier because Nuno's Q is going to be obviously his main damage source. But the main thing you want to just look for at 20 minutes is you want to try to look for a duo Baron with maybe your AD carry or just if you have a good top laner for Baron or a good mid laner for Baron. Now, good top laners would include just any champion that maybe builds a bladed rune king or just has good like single target damage. Maybe an Urgle, for example, with his turrets, you can run around the Baron, he'll do enough damage to ensure that the Baron will go at a reasonable pace. Now this is a very good tactic in solo queue especially, because people don't necessarily expect a 20 minute Baron instantly. They will not have it warded by 20 minutes usually. Maybe towards the higher elos they will like then start to respect the Nunu a little bit more and start to actually ward the Baron at 20 minutes. But that's something that you will see in the future as well and that's something to take note of. So at 20 minutes, Nunu can easily do Baron. You can do it by yourself if you're tanky enough, but that's going to be like kind of a situation where you're going to have to feel this out. Usually it's with like two tank items, additionally to your um, Cinder Hulk and your boots. But yeah. All right, here I fill my, uh, my uh, snowball pretty hard there. So I didn't get the snowball onto the flat in that situation. Uh, the blue is going to spawn here, so I definitely want to take this and give it to the Oriana again. Oriana showed up to take it. And now, again, the objective control here is the Rift Herald. So Juani just went bot lane. They, I believe, got a kill, or maybe they didn't. Did she, wait, did she go bot lane? I believe she did, right? She's fairly low here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so they killed our bot lane. They are going for this turret, so I'm definitely going to make sure that I take use of this and... Um, just go and do Rift Herald real quick. Now, Nunu is really good at this, especially with the eye. Nunu's consume will do a lot of damage to it as well. So every time it's off cooldown, you just consume it. And then you just walk around to hit the eye. Now, one thing to note about Rift Herald is once it gets under, I believe, 2000 HP, then the eye will never open again. So always try to, if you just hit the eye and it's about the like this amount of HP, always just stop hitting it for a little bit. Wait for the eye to open again. And then you can finish hitting it because then you can consume I smite it if you know what I'm saying. So you can just consume it whilst at the same or like like just hit the eye, consume and then smite it, which is gonna do approximately three thousand damage, and that's gonna be a very quick smite. So as soon as it hits about twenty five hundred HP, just stop hitting it, wait for the eye to open again, and then smite it that way because then uh, you will not have to hit it whilst the eye never opens again. So it's a little bit more efficient to wait in that situation. So that's one thing to note, and that's uh, right, right there. Now, quickly, just want to use the Rift Herald on top lane whilst the third platings are still up. Like, the third platings will go down on 14 minutes, so I'm really just trying to get the platings. And I'm going to be just barely in time to get those platings right there. So I still got a good amount of money out of that Rift Herald. And I got to split that with my Darius right there. Now, ideally, in your average game, you'd want to do that Rift Herald a little bit faster. So let's say the 10, 11 minute mark, you want to look towards doing that Rift Herald because then you can use it, for example, just to get an entire turret after a gank. So you can snowball into a lane, like for example, mid or top lane. That's usually the best lane to go for. And then you can use the Rift Herald in those lanes to get the turret down, get a lot of gold plating out of that. And that's really what you're looking for. So in your average game, you want to definitely get the Rift Herald at about 10 to 11 minutes. I didn't do it this game. I got a little bit delayed on it. So yeah, I, it was a little bit late in this situation. Now the Shiver and the Brahma here. I currently don't have my Snowball up. So that was really, yeah, unfortunate there. I couldn't follow that play up from the Darius. And right here, I'm just going to go back to clear my camps. I don't necessarily feel like finishing the entire camp just because it takes a little bit too much time. And because my bot lane, like there's no pressure on bot lane, I cannot contest this dragon either, so I have to give it away to the enemy. Right there, I kind of failed my curve on the snowball there. I did pinch the Sejuani between me and Darius, so there's really nothing much the Sejuani can do. She's just going to die. 
All right, here I did make the mistake there of actually faking that blue buff. That was not necessary at all. I should have just given that to the Orianna. There was really no way of that blue buff being taken, especially if after I just killed Sejuani. So do keep that in mind that you know, just taking the blue buff like that wasn't the best play. And you should always try to give it to someone more beneficial than yourself on Nunu. You're being a tank, you don't need the blue buff to output more damage or have mana sustained because you're fine in those aspects easily. Alright, here. I'm just kind of shadowing the Orianna a little bit to see if they might engage on her. We definitely want to try to get this top turret to get the outer line down, which she just did. I'm just chilling here a little bit guarding the Orianna. Now, Orianna is basing, so I also base. And I am just going to build to my magic resist item. Right here in this situation, um, I do see the Braum, which I thought was kind of out of position. However, the Galio is the only one that's going to be able to follow this up reasonably fast. Darius is a little bit too far. We have the Tristan top lane and the Orano right here. So this is a little bit of a, I guess, overextend play. This Braum, they, their likelihood of the enemy team being close up to him is higher than my team because my AD carry is top. I don't have a mid lane or he's bot lane and the Dari is a little, a little too far out to start like actually getting bleed procs on this Braum. So overall, this is not a good play and I definitely should not have gone for this because the enemy team, as you can see, instantly collapses there. They were pretty much all there and we lose our life too quickly. So yeah, that was pretty bad and definitely not ideal. I don't know if I die for this. Looks like I do. Yeah, definitely die for this. So we pretty much just lost three people for a play that wasn't that smart. Always, like, you're not do gonna do any damage on Nunu, so don't expect to do damage. And you definitely need to, hear, ha to have your carries around to make sure something works. So that's something to take note of. Like, read into those mistakes that I just made there and just wait the next time for your carries to be around. Whether that's your Trist or your Orianna or just any one of those in general. Now the enemy team is 12 kills. We are 5 kills, so we are definitely behind. We, however, do have a, quite an equal amount of gold, mainly due to objectives. We have an like additional turret, I believe, just one additional turret, and then also the Rift Herald got, gave us like a lot of plating of the other turrets still in the end a little bit, and yeah. Now the good thing about Nunu is that um, if you don't get like the best early game, for example, a lot of ganks off, the enemy lanes were pretty hard to gank this game as well with the Vladimir Sivir, and then also of course Brom. The Irelia could have been an option that I could have ganked a little bit more this game, but she was playing pretty pretty safe, so there was really pretty hard to actually like just get the gank off there. If you don't get the greatest early game on Nunu, as you can see, I only have four assists, and I don't really have much more kill participation than that in 20 minutes. Then it, things might get a little tricky, but then again, you have to remember that Nunu is very good at team fighting, and if you just place your ultimates correctly, you can carry a team like or like allow your carries to survive team fights very very easily which you will see later on as well because well yeah i hear vlad kind of gets caught out the dragon will be spawning soon we definitely want to be going for that um now right here this is going to be just team this is going to be a team fight i'm going to just show you positioning in a little bit slower pace this is more the positioning of a tank you want to be able to as you can see right here the galio is engaging on the brown the Sejuani is then out of position because she will be alone. So my Darius and my Tristana will be solo hitting this Sejuani. So she's going to have to tank pretty much everything of that sort. The enemy's carries will not be able to follow this up. Vladimir is dead, so it's going to be a 4v5. And this is going to be a better situation for us to be in. So right here, I'm coming from the back to make sure that I get onto their carries. To make sure they will not be able to deal damage to my Orianna, for example. Or just engage on this. So the Sijuani and the Brahma are going to have to tank the Darius and the Tristana. Now, as you can see right here, Trist uh, Sivir pops her ultimate. I'm just going to try to hit the snowball with her. She obviously spell shields it because, well, she's Sivir. Now, the best thing to do right here is cast my ultimate. Now, the, the thing to note here is that you will be slowing them. But, like, slowing them here, you will also, at the same time, threaten a good amount of damage onto them because you do actually do a pretty good amount of base damage. And, as you can see... They have to deal with me. They have to keep hitting me as much as possible. And right before the Aurelia stun hits, I proc my ultimate to make sure that I will be able to walk out of it. And at this point, I've tanked enough damage. I've slowed down their carries enough that my Tristana, my Darius, will be able to clean this fight up. As you can see, they killed the Brom. Didn't get the kill on the Sejuani. She was, I guess, too tanky or didn't focus her. 
And at this point, I just start hitting scuttle crap, start queuing scuttle crap, and I'm pretty much full HP again. So I'm prepared to fight again. One Q on a scuttle crab heals me for like 500. So that's going to be fairly easy. Now, just, just that positioning and using your ult to kind of zone their carries out of actually being able to do something uh, really just carries a team fight like that. All right, that was a little bit of an overextend for this fight. We, yeah. We do kill both of them, but the Tristana dies with the Galio, so that isn't ideal. I do want to leave this red buff up for Trist to get. I do, at the same time, uh, want to make sure that the enemy doesn't get it. And right now, I think I should be looking to back quite soon for my item here. Want to make sure to look at as much vision control as you can as well. Right here, another fight going down. Uh, the one thing to note, by the way, I didn't back between this fight and the last fight. I do have a little. I do have the goal to maybe finish like a spirit visage off or something like that. But on Nunu, it isn't like you don't really need the goal to be effective in team fights. Sure, backing is like very good, and I should have probably backed before this fight. But something to take note that you do have a lot of healing. Your skills don't really cost that much mana. And you will easily just be able to sustain and go through a next fight really, really easily. So you can pressure the map a little bit longer for that reason. All right, here they're going to be in this situation right now. The Braum uses, like, they pretty much use all the CC there. Now, the best play for me to do right now is just to cast my ultimate, which you can see right here. I start casting my ultimate in this tight spot, which pretty much slows everyone on the enemy team down, making it harder for them to team fight. The Sejuani is out here, so she's not going to be able to do much either way. And as you can see right here, this ultimate is just going to pretty much destroy the enemy team in a second here. Like, that does a good amount of damage. It slowed them really hard, so they will not be able to follow the fight up. And then right here, we just kill the enemy team, and we're going to be able to do Baron off that. Now, just... No, right there, that was just very good ult placements. Always on Nunu and teamfights, look to stand in the middle of the enemy team or just in the middle of the teamfight itself and then press your ultimate there. Try to avoid the CC or maybe use it after CC, or like after the enemy team has used their CC so they will not be instantly be able to cast, uh, cancel your ultimate. So that's one very big thing to notice. And right here, it's just, uh, yeah, just tank Baron. Now, one thing to do that you do want to note is... The Q smite on Nunu, you literally just press Q and then right, just like half a second later-ish, you can get a kind of a feel for the uh, timing. You just want to smite at that moment and then the true damage with your Q and your smite is going to hit at the same time, uh, which can go up to 2k in smite damage. So that's pretty much impossible for the enemy team to actually outsmite. And yeah, that, that's just what you want to look for. All right, here I do have a lot of gold, so I'm going to be able to finish my item here. That gets me on my Spirit Visage, and then also gets me my Thorn Mill. Or not my Thorn Mill, my um, Bramble Vest. They have a lot of, like, healing, sustain in Vladimir. Irelia does want to sustain off Lifesteal as well. So just getting the extra Lifesteal reduction, or the um, healing reduction, that will provide you with a lot of extra... I, I would I would kind of say CC into the enemy team. They will not be able to do like put their kit to full use. So I would still kind of consider it a little bit of CC. But yeah, they it will just reduce their healing, which is going to make it harder for them to sustain and team fight. So they definitely want to don't want to hit you in the first place. But if they then do hit you, they will have the really healing reduction on you, as you just saw on the Vladimir. There, he's going to he heal a lot less. And yeah. Uh, the way you want to position on Nunu is definitely want to look towards being on the front line. Uh, you always just want to, again, keep the objective control up. As you can see right here, I just want to go for this dragon. Want to get that out of the pit. Well, that was a team fight. Or that is it going to be a team fight. Alright, so what I'm looking for right here is just to be in a position where I can threaten to be... Um, I guess the best position, or the best way to say this, is you're gonna want to be in a position where you can look to go in while threatening to to be like a champion that can actually lock someone down. So the Aurelia and the Sivir are gonna have to be careful that I don't hit them with a snowball or something like that. And then at the same time, you want to be more on the front lines and actually try to tank the damage. You don't just want to run in because that's a very big mistake. Mistake a lot of tanks make is just run in for no reason at all. 
then you were gonna be tanking for no like for literally no good reason at all so right here i just want to be on the front line so i can kind of force this fight a little bit forward and my carries they will not have to fear as much um when like getting engaged on so right here i'm walking forward but i also do want to be very careful that i don't get hit by this aurelia stun for example or try to avoid it as much as possible they don't hit their skill shots on me for free now aurelia i waited with the sun so she still connects on it this galio ult not too sure about that one but yeah it, they just used their cc on me which is fine the aurelia just used their stun on me so that kind of enables the oriana and the trist to do a little bit more in this specific fight now as you can see right here i'm just walking forward whilst just like healing myself off the Sejuani. And as soon as I get into a good position to ult, which is right here, my ult's a pretty big radius. So this cuts off the Vlad coming from the side because as you can see, this ultimate placement's right here. So you definitely wanna look for a placement of the ultimate that will put the enemy team in a very bad position. Now my carries are both behind me. So what they're gonna have to do if they wanna get to Tristana or Orianna, they're gonna have to walk through my ultimate, which is gonna slow them. And then they will also take a good amount of damage if my ultimate actually fully charges and actually hits now i waited long enough with my ultimate so the aurelio is not able to just throw her e on me or they will not be able to waste their cc on me because if they use their cc on me and cancel my ultimate then the tristana and the oriana are gonna have a much freer time now of course this team fight the oriana is really low with no mana so she is realistically not going to do that much but as you can see right here i'm using this ultimate aurelia is going to be slowed vlad is going to be slowed they're not going to be able to do much they're not going to be able to run up from here. So they're like this Vlad, as you can see, is completely slowed. It's not going to be able to get to the Trist. Now, sure, he does kill the Oriana because he was already very low. But in this situation, that just that single ultimate pretty much denied the enemy team completely from actually trying to follow that fight through. And they're not going to be able to do anything at that point. So ultimate placement is very, very key on Nunu. And just make sure you don't just run in face first for no reason, because that is just going to hurt you a little bit too much. And you're going to get too low. Now, if the team fight like goes down and for example it's going to be in the situation like right here if there is a minion wave around you can easily walk up to a minion and queue it because then you're going to get like five to six hundred hp back and you're just going to be able to tank that much more damage so that's one thing to take note of and that's one thing you have to consider on nunu so yeah just keep that in mind it always if you can try to queue something sure you can queue champions but it's going to heal you less than queuing a minion and your damage is really not going to be that significant in a team fight that you just yeah, want to use your, your Q for damage, really. So it's going to be mainly sustain and trying to be the front line for your champions. All right, here I'm very low on mana, so I just want to make sure that I back up a little bit. My carries can still push the um, inhibitor turret, but I just want to ensure that I get this dragon. Now, Anunu is very good at just doing this. As you can see, I don't really take damage, and every Q I do just chunks down the dragon a little bit more and more every time. That's the same kind of concept for Baron. The Baron is not going to do enough damage to you to actually kill you because you have a lot of tank stats and you're mainly just building tank items and then your Q is also going to sustain you and with your cinder hulk damage you're going to burn the damage on the baron as well so you're just going to easily be able to do that now sure if you're so soloing baron on nunu you're going to take a little bit too long so you ideally want another champion as i just mentioned earlier now again give the blue to oriana and i just back here for the thornmill thornmill is a very good item into their team just again for the healing reduction and at this point you can build anything that just works really well now in this specific game i was thinking about a deadman's plate i do believe because i will be able to just run into the enemy team a little bit easier and that's also usually kind of a very uh, good build path anyway because the deadman's plate synergizes very well with your snowball it allows you to get into a team fight position where you can get your ultimate off very effectively and yeah that's just it's just a really good item on you in general I just want to get a little bit of CC, or CC, get a little bit of farm and get the vision control on the Baron. That's the main objective for the next one. The Baron is going to be the, the big objective here. Um, just buy the pink wards for it. Buying pink wards in general on Nunu, you usually have some slots open. You're more of a supportive type tank. You don't really need to do any damage. So getting your control wards down is very important. Getting that, yeah. Now, starting Baron on Nunu is very easy, because if you're in a situation like this, you can easily just start queuing the Baron, and your team can keep zoning. You're not going to really take any damage from the Baron, and you're just going to be able to whittle it, whittle it down, uh, sl slowly but surely. So that's something you can look for, which I'm not sure if I'm going to do right here. Maybe I didn't decide to... Actually, yeah, I just start doing hitting Baron, as you can see. 
This is one thing you can do in like a Baron Siege position. The Orianna is just going to be able to zone. The Darius doesn't really have to do anything. The only thing you really need on Nunu is one extra person to hit the Baron. Now ideally this would be your AD carry because he does the most damage usually. Now sure if games go differently then that might be different. But usually the AD carry will do the most damage. And as you can see this Baron doesn't really do any damage to me. And once it gets into the damage range my Q will be back up as you can see. So I took like this, this amount of damage. I Q I'm pretty much full HP again. And yeah, this Baron's just going to go down very easily. I can easily tank this whilst the Orianna, the Darius, and the Galio zone. And there's really not much the enemy team will be able to do with against this. Now, as you can see, I have my smite up. And I'm just going to, like, sure, the Baron took a little bit damage, too much damage here because of Orianna's burst. But I, you just ideally want to keep your, like, Q off cooldown. Once it gets to about 2.5k HP, like 3 to 2.5k HP, don't use your Q again. Because you want to look for that Q smite combo. So you Q first and then wait a little bit, then smite. Because that's going to be about a 2000 true damage smite. And that's nearly impossible for the enemy to smite steal. Or just to steal in, steal in general. So that's really what you want to look for. If the Baron gets about 3000 HP or lower. Don't use your Q again. Wait for it to get in range of your Q smite. Which at this level is probably about 1850 damage. Um, yeah, and that's just what you want to look for. So just one thing to keep in mind when it comes to securing objectives like that same thing goes for bear or for dragons as well by the way if you're gonna get in like towards the end of a dragon don't use your q just wait for it wait for it to get low enough for a q smite and then just q smite it because that way you will not give the enemy jungler a, like an option to actually steal it from you it's going to be nearly impossible to smite steal anything away from a nunu all right here i right there just one thing to note, you guys might think, why did you snowball that? Or why did you snowball there? Now, it's mainly just a zone. Like, I'm being a tank, sure, but I'm also just making sure that you're not going to be able to get to my carries. Now, that's the most important role you have. Deny the enemy from getting onto your carries. Now, as you can see right here, the position they have is their group five men here. The Galio is right here and the Oriana is right here. So I instantly start casting my snowball. So if they would run up this way, then um, my snowball will hit them or just will hit one person and my... I will be able to engage the fight from there. Now, they instantly backed off, so I instantly dropped my snowball, so I don't want to run away from this position that I have right now. And really what we're waiting for is the Trist to push this in, whilst we just pressure top lane now. A Trist hitting mid whilst we're going for top lane. We get the thing here. Now, the enemy team fully engages onto us, which is honestly fine. The Orianna goes into Zonias right here, and as you can see, I just start casting my ultimate. To make sure that I slow the enemy team down as much as possible. Whilst also dealing a good amount of damage with the old proc in the end. As you can see that did a decent chunk of damage to them. Mainly, main thing there to note is they slowed it. Now sadly in this specific fight here. The severe uh, black shielded. Or sorry black shielded spell shielded the Darius ultimate. So he was not able to get the reset off Sivir. If he did get the reset there the enemy team would have died pretty much instantly. But just off that he just kind of gets killed. And the Tristana I mean was clearing mid lane of course. But there's, yeah, she's just kind of going to be able to clean it at the end. I be does, do believe she actually dies here to the Vladimir. Yeah, yeah, she dies here to the Vladimir. Well, that's really as Nunu at this point, there's not much I can do. The Vladimir is still alive. It was me. If it was me against Sichuani, then I would easily have a chance. Because I have sustain, she doesn't. She does have a little bit more damage than me, but yeah. There's really no point in fighting it. I might as well just back off, get towards this dragon, get the objective. And just go on from there. Got Scuttle. Um, I was waiting a little bit for my Orianna and the Darius to get closer there, by the way. I can easily start that dragon no problem, but I just want to make want my carries to be around in case they try to engage on me. I don't want to be tanking damage for free for no reason at all, so I definitely just want to wait for a situation that's good for me to uh, actually start something like that. Now here at level 16, I get the two parts for my Deadman's Blade. And yeah, I just used my Snowball initially here to get out of base a little bit faster. As you can see, it's a lot of movement speed, so it will be back up in, uh, in enough time for the next fight. Now, Sejuani just used her ultimate in that situation. Now, I can easily look for maybe a snowball engage on something right here. So, I'm just going to run in with a snowball. I'm very tanky. I just want to be in front of my uh, my carries. That's the way you want to position as a tank, as Nunu. 
Uh, my Tristana is right here, so I want to be in front of her, block as much damage for the Tristana as possible. And then as soon as my Oriana kind of shows up in this situation as well, I kind of want to position myself towards them. So as you can see, I'm pathing backwards towards my Oriana, my Trist, to kind of peel them off. Now, sure, Oriana dies here pretty much one shot. And I just start casting my ultimate, so the, um, the rest of the enemy team, as you can see the positioning here. Again, the ult positioning is very important and it's something you have to take note of on Nunu. So initially I go in here. Then I position myself between their team and Tristana, as you can see. Uh, if the Aurelia decides to ult from this range, then she's going to hit me and she'll barely miss the Tristana. So I want to position myself enough that the ult doesn't hit Trist so she doesn't get a proc and Aurelia gets dashes on her for free. So right here, I just want to make sure that I try to position myself between the carries. Now, as you can see, this ult placement right here, the enemy team is placed uh, at about here beneath. Then the Vlad's right here, which is going to be in the range of my ultimate. And Aurelia still has to go through my ultimate to get Tristana. So in this situation, she is slowed. I am slowing the Vladimir. I am cutting the path off for the Sejuani and the Brahm to even get to my Tristana. And that's really the placement of the ultimate right here. Now she is still slowed. She had a lot of trouble because she was slowed and Trist was easily able to kill her at that point. I just, yeah, propped my ultimate really. And from here, I defended my Trist pretty much long enough for this fight to be an easy cleanup. And as you can see, it is an easy cleanup, and that's pretty much game. So that's the most important thing with Nunu. Even if you don't have the greatest game with your ganks in the early game, sure, it might not always go too well. This game specifically, I am facing a Sivir, which is really hard to gank with just a snowball gank. Vlad's pretty much impossible. I really, I was playing very like cautiously. And yeah, overall, when it comes to team fighting, make sure you're positioning your ultimates very well. And objective control is the king on Nunu. There is no better jungler for objective control than Nunu, just because of the fact that it's impossible to outspider Nunu. If, for example, the enemy team were to go and start a Baron, for example, then you can maybe take the plant over the wall, or just flash over the wall in general and easily smite steal it when you go in time, because your smite is 1850 damage at level 15. At level 16, it's like 1900 damage, and of course at level 18 it's going to be 2000 damage. And now it's smiting that if you get the timing down properly, which again I would recommend you practicing in practice tool a little bit. It's Q and then wait just a little bit and then smite. It's kind of kind of have to get a feel for it. Just yeah, practice the snowballing and practice tool, practice that, smite a little bit, and that's really all you need to know on Nunu. Apart from that, team fighting, place your ult properly, and you should be good. Now Nunu does require carry, so take note of that. He's a very good champion, and yeah. Overall, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Also, if you have suggestions for other guides, put those in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!